بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير صدق الله العظيم <coughs> شاءالله today we are going to be starting from سورة الملك and the plan is by the end of day by the end of the class we are going to get to surah an-nas we're just going to go briefly over these surahs because both of the juz the juz of 29th and the juz of 30th they both are referring to similar um content in regards to the surahs because all of the surahs are a majority of the surahs are Makki surah revealed before the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we are getting closer to the end of the Quran, the theme of the Quran is referring or um, getting our direction towards uh, preparing for the life of your after. When we started the Quran, the preparation was about guidance living up to the guidance staying away from the temptations of shaitan recognizing your enemy recognizing your friends and your foes all of those things were being mentioned and the responsibility of human being carrying out their uh the purpose of life in this world etc so these things were the focus now as we are getting towards the end of the holy quran uh, the focus is uh, remembering about the powers of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, so the 29th juz has been dedicated towards a da'wah to Allah al-Malik al-Muluk, uh, the uh, call towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, preparing yourself to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. And the 30th juz is uh, dedicated towards making your akhirah at tazkiru bil akhirah uh, remembrance and reminder for the life of your after and getting yourself prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Mulk according to the sequence of the Quran 67 according to sequence of revelation Makki Surah revealed before the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ayat are 30 and the ruku are 2. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given multiple names of this surah as Imam Tirmidhi has mentioned the narration in his sunan that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inni la'arifu suratan fil qur'ani thalathuna ayatan man qara'aha fa huwa yunji min adab al qabr the person I know a surah in the Quran which is consists of 30 verses the person who would recite this surah Allah will save and secure him from the punishment of the grave um, in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended to recite this surah before going to bed at night. Also, the name of this surah, other than Surah Al-Mulk, is Al-Mani'a Al-Munjiya wa hiya tunji min adab al-qabr. It is a stopper, a, a barrier, and a, and, and a salvation, a, a, a source of salvation for those who will recite this surah. This surah will protect them from the punishment of the grave. So there have been multiple narrations from the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding Surah Al-Mulk being as a source of savior and protector in the horrors of the grave. As Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, the, the first place of a person's destination from the destinations of Akhirah is his grave. And if your grave is being protected, then the rest of the situations of Akhirah will also be protected. But unfortunately, if a person is not able to save and protect himself from the torment and the punishment of grave, then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the re remaining portion of the Akhirah journey will be very difficult for this individual. So recitation, the reason why this surah is so effective because surah, this surah talks about the powers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the purpose of life, Allah Azza wa Jal says, ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah created life and death so he can, he can test which one of you does the best of action and have the best of action. Also, this surah speaks about um, the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mulk of Allah, the kingdom of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
<clears throat> so this is a very effective surah. Uh, we should try to memorize it. If not, then at least recite it at night before going to bed. Next surah is Surah Al-Qalam. Surah Al-Qalam is also a Makki surah according to the sequence of um, the Quran. This is surah number 68 according to the sequence of Revelation, surah number 2. So after Surah Al-Alaq, Surah Al-Qalam was revealed. The first surah according to the sequence of Revelation is Surah Al-Alaq and number 2 is Surah Al-Qalam. Qalam means the pen and this is referring to the pen that Allah created to write all the maqadir and all the situations of human being and all the creations of Allah and all the situations of this life and of the world until the day of judgment. Awwalu ma khalaq Allah, the riwayat of Sahih Muslim. Awwalu ma khalaq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-qalama. The first creation that Allah created was the pen. So maqala uktub. And then Allah addressed the pen and told it to write. And, this, uh, and then the pen asked, oh Allah, what should I write? The pen said, whatever is going to happen and the things that will be created and the things that will be destroyed, everything happens with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal says in the Quran, وَعِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ To Allah, the knowledge of the book is there, that what is going to happen and how it's going to happen and who's going to do what, all of that has been written uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Qalam is one of the very important creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a very significant creation. That's why ulama say that Allah azza wa jal takes the qasam of the Qalam in the Quran. That means anything that is given the name of the pen, it should be respected and honored. And this is from the tools of knowledge. Qalam is from the tools of knowledge because kitabah to write, it is 50% of the ilm. If a person is not able to write, then the knowledge will not be preserved. So through writing, the knowledge is preserved, even from the mind. Uh, when you write something, it has a greater impact of, of remembering versus something that you do not write. So writing is one of the very important, using the pen in writing, it's very important source of, so qalam wa ma yasturun, Allah says, we take the su we take the uh, oath of the pen and what it and what they write. So writing is a very great source of learning knowledge and, and has been glorified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal praises Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are three main subjects to this surah. Number one is Mawdu'ur Risala, the importance of, of messenger and the message of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number two is Al Akhirah. The life of after uh, uh, number two is uh, the story of the people of 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 the garden, those people who obeyed Allah and those those people who spent. So Allah mentions a story of 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 an individual who Allah gave wealth and he was very generous in giving wealth of Allah. When his uh, children became the inheritance of that wealth, they destroyed the commands of Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed the wealth. And the third. Uh, Focus of this surah is the life of your after. The last portion, the last ayah, The last two verses of this surah, ayah number 51 and 52, Allah says, and indeed the disbelievers seem to trip you up with their glances when they hear the reminder and say, he is a madman indeed. And it is nothing else but a reminder for all the words. So Allah, this it's an ayah that can be recited to protect an individual from an evil eye. So recite this verse to be protected from an evil eye. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jal, because the people of Mecca, was giving evil eye to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he can be stopped from his mission. So Allah told Nabi Alaihi Salatu Wasallam to recite these verses, the end of Surah Al-Qalam. So recite them or you can have it, recite them in the morning and in the evening, or even you can recite it and blow it in water and drink that water to protect yourself or anyone else who has been cast with an evil eye. This is the recommendation of Mufassirun that this ayah can be used to protect an individual 
from an evil eye. Next surah, Al-Haqqa. So Al-Haqqa is one of the names of the Day of Judgment, ayah number 69, according to the sequence of Quran 78, according to sequence of Revelation, the ayat are 52 and the ruku are 2. The main theme of this surah is about the life of, uh, about the Day of Judgment and the happenings of the Day of Judgment and what will happen to people. People will be in two categories. فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدًا وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّةً وَاحِدًا وَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةٌ Allah talks about the situations of the Day of Judgment and the people, there will be people who will be given books in their right hand and another category of people who will be given their books in the left hand. Those who will be given their books in the right hand they will be in a very pleasing situation and they will be inclining towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those people who will be given book in the left hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, but they will not have a very bright future. And unfortunately, they will go through the horrors of the day of judgment and the punishment of the hellfire is even worse and severe. We ask Allah's protection. So this surah talks about the day of judgment. <clears throat> Next surah is Surah Al-Ma'arij, Al-Ma'arij, <clears throat> Allah talks about this, Min Allahi Dhil Ma'arij, ayah number three, and it will come from Allah, the Lord of the stairways, Al-Ma'arij is from Uruj, and that is talking about the uplifting going up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu mentions that Nadar bin Harith came and he was uh, challenging Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah mentions that challenge in Surah Al-Anfal and they said Allahumma in kana huada huwa al-haqqu min indik fa'amtar alayna hijaratan min al-samai awitina bi'adab alim that the people of Mecca and especially Nadar bin Harith who was one of the chiefs of Mecca and very hostile against the mission of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave this challenge and he said that oh Allah if this is the truth which messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is calling towards then send us the punishment immediately um, that he is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is warning against. So this ayah, this surah was revealed, Sa'ala sa'ilun bi'adabin waqir. A demanding person referring to Nadar bin Haris, he is asking for when the punishment is going to befall. Lilkafirina laysa lahu dafi' min Allahi dhil ma'arij. This is going to, uh, the, the, the non-believers will not be able to save themselves from the punishment. So Surah Al-Ma'arij is talking about the punishment of Allah. And those who will be saved from the punishment of Allah are also mentioned in this surah. The ayat are 44, the ruku are 2, 70 according to the sequence of the Quran and 79 according to the sequence of revelation. So Allah talks about those who will be punished and those who will be saved. When this punishment will come and in the day of judgment, a person will be, you know, um, on the day of judgment, the disbelievers, the mujrimin, the wrongdoers will wish that if they can give their own family members in compensation to save and secure them from the punishment of, of, of the hellfire and the punishment that Allah will send upon those who disbelieve. But Allah says, of course, this will not save them. Except who will be saved from the punishment of Allah on that day? those who perform their salah not just salah those who were very punctual in, and regular in their salah and they used to spend money help those who are in need um, they used to believe on the day of judgment and they were um, fearful of the punishment of Allah and so these people who have those uh, the people who have these qualities they are going to be saved from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. So what they will get? They will be honored in gardens of Jannah. 
So this is the theme or, or the subjects that this surah, Surah Al-Ma'arij talks about. The next surah is Surah Al-Nuh, uh, surah number 71, according to the sequence and revelation. Ayat are 60, uh, 28 and the Ruku are 2. Uh, this surah talks about the entire surah is dedicated about the story of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. And this surah is revealed to give easiness to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam regarding the difficulties that he was receiving from the people of Mecca when he was delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this surah talks about uh, the story of Nuh alayhi salam, then how Nuh alayhi salam called people towards Allah and he told them that Allah is going to save you from punishment. Allah is going to give you what you want and what you wish in this dunya and the life of your after if you obey and fulfill his orders. But unfortunately, there were only few of them from, this, from the people of Nuh alayhi salam who actually accepted Islam. Majority of them denied and they became from the failure. And we ask Allah's protection. Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed them and anyone from them who were disobedient to Allah and only those who embarked the ark of Nuh alayhi salam, they were saved from the punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next surah is Surah Al-Jinn 72 according to the sequence of the Quran, surah number 40 according to the sequence of Revelation. This was the early part of the Meccan life where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given order by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and give da'wah to the groups of jinn. Ayat are 28 and the ruku are 2. The surah talks about, beginning portion of the surah talks about the conversation of Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That it has been revealed to me that a group from the jinn has listened to the Quran and said, to their people, indeed, we have heard an amazing recital, which is the Quran. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not just the prophet of the humans, but he was also the prophets of the jinn. And Nabi alayhi salatu was salam would often go and to the groups of the jinns and give da'wah. This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has created. They used to reside on earth before the humans. But they created mischief, so Allah took away their, uh, their stability from earth. So they still live on earth, but they're not seen by human beings. And they are a very strong creation of Allah, but due to their instability, they're not able to harm human beings. And human beings consider, are, are, are considered to be more stronger than jinn as, as far as the physical appearance is concerned. However, the non-physical appearance, the strength of the jinnat is much more greater than the strength of human being. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also recommended those who have the fear of jinns, they should recite Surah Al-Jinn uh, that has been recommended by the scholars. So the Surah Al-Jinn, uh, towards the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling people towards Allah. Allah says, إِنَّمَا أَدْعُوا رَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ أَحَدًا Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I call towards my Lord and I'm not amongst those who commit shirk. Also Allah mentions the importance of the house of Allah. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا That the masajid, they belong to Allah and you should not worship anyone else in the masjid except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning the obedience and the ibadah of Allah only should be taking place in the masjid. The next surah is Surah Al-Muzammil. According to the sequence of the Quran, surah number 73, according to the sequence of Revelation, surah number 3. The surah was re revealed after Surah Al-Qalam. So Surah Al-Alaq, number 1. Number 2, Surah al um, Qalam, number three is Surah Al-Muzammil, and then number four is going to be Surah Al-Muddathir, the one after this one. Ayat are 20, and the ruku are uh, two. Al-Muzammil is the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who have been wrapped up in a cloth. So Nasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been given different titles in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal Nabi, Ya ayyuhal Muzammil, Ya ayyuhal Muddathir, Ya ayyuhal Rasul. So these are the titles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these titles Allah azza wa gives in different ways expressing his love 
to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you like someone, when you have, you know, your child, sometimes he's doing some things that you name him and you give him a nickname because of that, right? And that nickname is, is, is an expression of love. So in these surahs, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is being, he's feeling the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the messenger of Allah sallam, towards himself. So uh, that's why these title has been given to Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. The overall theme of this surah is giving a contentment to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ordering him to stand up in prayer and to dedicate his time towards the worship of Allah. So, stand up for the prayer except for a little part. Nisfahu awin qus half or even less than a half, a little bit less than a half. Awzid alayhi or more than a half. Waratilil Quran and tartila and recite Quran with tartil in the in your salah at night. Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. We are going to send down to you a weighty discourse. So Quran the revelation is very heavy. This is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the revelation used to come down Aisha radiallahu anha describes that ka'anna jabinahu yata'arraqu arqan or kama qal that the uh, forehead of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would start dripping sweat at the time when the revelation would come down and the entire position of the revelation has been mentioned in a hadith Imam Bukhari has the hadith uh, the first chapter in his sahih Kitabu Kaifa Kana Badul Wahi Ila Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The book How the Revelation Used to Descend upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he brings a narration of Aisha Radiallahu Anha. Ahyan and Yatini Mithla Salat Il Jaras Wahiya Shuddu Wahiya Ashakku Alaya. That sometimes it will come in a form of a, a continuous ringing bell, and this will be the most difficult. Sometimes it will be a heavy weight that would be put upon me and due to which I would have a severe uh, sweat that would come and sometimes the sweat will be dropping from the forehead of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam due to the heaviness of this, of this uh, Quran and the re revelation that is coming to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Surah Al-Muzammil talks about this and then Surah Al-Muzammil also talks about the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, establishing prayer, reciting the Quran, and uh, and to give the best of loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, it tells us that whatever we send forward for our, for our destination, which is Jannah, for Akhirah, that is going to be preserved by Allah and it will be rewarded by Allah. So seek forgiveness of Allah. Indeed, Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. Next surah is Surah al muddathir revealed after the Surah al muzammil revelation and sequence are in the same manner, 74 according to the sequence of the Quran, according to the sequence of revelation, Surah number 4 revealed after Muzammil. Muddathir is also uh, the one who is in, he have been enveloped in mantle, meaning into, the, into a sheet. And this is another address to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surah Al-Muzammil was getting yourself ready to worship Allah and Surah Al-Muddathir is to getting yourself ready to convey the message of Allah. Surah Al-Muzammil is to get yourself re ready in receiving revelation and Surah Al-Muddathir is to um, convey the message of revelation. Surah Al-Muzammil is the method of download and Surah Al-Muddathir is the method of upload, meaning uploading it to the people. So this is why Surah Al-Muzammil, because if you have it, then you give it to others. If you don't have it, what are you going to give to others, right? If you have a bowl and you have something in the bowl, then you are going to convey it to other people. But if you don't have anything, what are you going to convey? So in Surah Al-Muzammil, Allah is telling the messenger, equip yourself with night prayers, with recitation of Quran, with akhlaq, with greatness of Allah, with salah, dedication in ibadat, worshipping Allah, charity, giving, uh, uh, helping individuals. These are all akhlaq and a'mal that you need to equip yourself with. These are all the a'mal that you need to equip yourself with. And then, what are you getting yourself equipped? What is the reason to get yourself ready? 
So now you can go and convey the message. Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anthir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, wa thiyabaka fa'tahir, wa dhrujza fa'hjur, wa la tamnun tastakthir, wa li rabbika fa'sbir. So these are all the ayat. O oh, the one who have wrapped himself into cloth, stand up, go and warn people, glorify and pronounce the glorification of your greatness of your Lord. Clean your clothes and become purified. What rujza fahjur and keep away from filth. So these are all recommendation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is given to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in surah al-muddathir. That this is how you're going to convey your da'wah. You have to purify yourself innerly and outerly to go and convey the message. So you become, so you have the assistance of the angels and you can be, your message can be effective more and more. And وَلَا تَمْنُنْ تَسْتَكْثِرْ And do not do, and do, and do not do a favor to anyone merely to seek more in, in return. Whatever you are seek, you are, you are conveying the message. This is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرِ إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I'm not seeking any type of reward from you. I'm only seeking reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. وَلِرَبِّكَ فَصْبِرْ And of course, this message is not very easy to convey. There are going to be obstacles. There are going to be uh, retaliation. People are going to say things. They are going to abuse. So at that time, وَلِرَبِّكَ فَصْبِرْ And for the sake of your Lord, observe patient. When until when you have to observe this patient for Ida Nukhirof in Nakur until the day of judgment when the trump when the trumpet will be blown for that it will be very difficult that day upon the non believers this day will be very difficult and very it won't be easy. So this surah gives us the understanding, and then towards the end of the surah, Allah talks about the people of the hellfire. And the people of the hellfire will be addressed from the people of Jannah. Fi jannati yatasa'aluna anil mujrimin ma salakakum fi saqar What have made you go into the Jahannam? They will reply the people of hellfire lam nakum min al-musallin We never used to pray our salah. We never used to help those who are in need. And we never used to go and we used to indulge in mockery with those who used to mock. And we used to deny the day of judgment until death came to us. Then the intercession of no intercession will be accepted or any intercessor's intercession will be accepted on their behalf. So these are those people who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next surah is Al-Qiyamah, which talks about the day of judgment. That one day you will have to face that day, which is a very difficult day. 75 according to the sequence of the Quran, 31 according to the sequence of Revelation. Ayat are 40, Ruku are 2. Allah Azza wa Jal says, La uqsimu bi yawmil qiyamah. I swear by the day of resurrection. Wa la uqsimu bin nafsil lawama. I swear by the self reapproaching uh, consensus that the resurrection is a, is a reality. Nafsil lawama. There are three types of nafs. Nafsul Ammara, Nafsul Lamwama, and Nafsul Mutma'inna. Nafsul Ammara is that nafs, is that your inner conscious which provokes you to do disobedience of Allah. Nafsul Lawama is the nafs of a regular person that he is trying to do obey the obedience of Allah. So each time when he deviates, his nafs tells him, right, you have to do this. Abdullah bin Rawaha radiallahu anhu in the battlefield of Mu'ta, he is addressing his nafs. Aqsamtu ya nafsi latanzilinna aw latanzili aw latukrahinna fa in ajlab al-nasa wa shaddur ranna ma li araki takrahin al-jannah in anti illa nutfatun fi shanna. Abdullah bin Rawaha's Ash'ar, Hayat al-Sahaba, fourth volume. So, this is nafsul lawama, that your nafs each time tells you, what are you doing? Why are you disobeying Allah? Get to the right path. Do the right thing. Why? Because the nafs of a human being, either it directs him towards good deeds or bad deeds. If you don't control your nafs, 
if you don't make it according to the obedience of Allah, and then if you try to make, and then that the battle starts from nafsul lawama, that you are again and again self-approaching your nafs and telling your nafs that you have to obey Allah. This is the time to get yourself right. A few days of Ramadan is remaining, only a day and a half. And let's get your ibadat right. Let's get your forgiveness done. This is nafsul lawama. And then when a person leaves from this world, at that time, he has been granted nafsul mutma'inna. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Fadukhuli fi ibadi. Wadukhuli jannati. This is nafsul mutma'inna. That Allah gives him the inner peace. And when he departs from this world, he's happy with Allah. And Allah is happy with him. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ahabba liqa Allah. The one who would like to meet Allah, Allah also likes to meet him. The one who fears death and he doesn't know that he wants to meet Allah or not, or he's ready, he doesn't, he doesn't prepare himself to meet Allah, that Allah does not become anxious of meeting with him. In fact, he goes through a very miserable death and we ask Allah to save us from that death. So Surah Al-Qiyamah reminds us of that, that get yourself prepared for that last day when you will have to give accountability on the day of judgment. On that day, the human being will say, where is the escape? Where I can go to save myself? Kalla, never, there will be no refuge at all. La wazar, ila rabbika yawma idhin al-mustaqar. Yunabba'u al-insanu yawma idhin bima qaddama wa akhar. Insan will be told what he has sent forward and what he has left behind. Rather, man will be a witness against himself. Even though he may offer his excuses. O Prophet, do not move your tongue during the revelation for reciting the Quran to receive it in hurry. So Allah says we are going to preserve it and we are going to teach you its recitation. So be content when the revelation is coming down. So this is the message of Surah Al-Qiyamah. Until the end, Allah talks about uh, the day of judgment and how are you going to depart from this world. Surah Al-Dahar, the next and another name of the Surah is Surah Al-Insan. And both of these names or both of these words are used in the first ayah of this Surah. 76 according to the sequence of the Quran, 98 according to the sequence of Revelation. The ayat are 31 and the ruku are 2. Allah talks about the reality of this human being in this life. That human being was nothing and Allah gave him something. And then there are two categories of human being. One of those who achieve Jannah and the other those are those who achieve hellfire. And Allah describes both of them, both of these categories in the Surah, Surah Al-Dahr. Surah Al-Dahr is a Madani Surah revealed after the migration of the Prophet Wasallam. In fact, it's from the closest Madani Surah. Surah Al-Dahar is one of those surahs that Nabi alayhi salatu was salam was very punctual in reciting in, in, in his uh, Fajr Salah uh, on the day of Jum'ah. So on the day of Jum'ah, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam would recite in the first rakah Surah uh, Alif Lamim Sajda and the second rakah Surah Al-Dahar. And Imam Tahawi has mentioned in Hajj, in, in, in uh, Imam Tahawi has mentioned in Mukhtasar uh, Shahumani Al-Athar a narration that you know the Prophet ﷺ was very punctual in reciting these surahs. However, the ulama has differed in regards to the punctuality. However, um, uh, the punctuality is a difference of opinion, but the action has been proven by many authentic narration of the Prophet. ﷺ. In fact, Imam Bukhari has a chapter in Kitab al Salah, second volume, Babu Qiraat al Sajda wa Dahar. That you know, Rasul used to recite uh, in the Fajr Salah of the day of Jum'ah, Surah Al Sajda and Surah Al Dahar. Next Surah is Al Mursalat. Al Mursalat Urfa, Wal Mursalat Urfa, 77 according to the sequence of the Quran, 33 according to sequence of Revelation, Makki Surah revealed. Before the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the ayat are 50 and the ruku are 2. 
Surah Al-Mursalat is talking about the different creations and the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are talking about the winds, the winds that come with the orders of Allah, the winds that destroy and the clouds that spread all over those winds. So again, reminding of this, uh, of the powers of Allah in this dunya. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a unique thing in this surah is addressing human beings. And then those who disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah says they will have a wail. Woe that day to, the dis to, 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 to those who have disobeyed Allah to, to the deniers. So wail is um, a, a, a kalimatu, a kalimatu adab, meaning a, a statement of giving curse to someone. Wailul luck, you know, may, may woe come upon you or disgrace come upon you. Wail is also one of the valleys of hellfire. So Mufassirin say both can be meant that those who are deniers of the truth, they will be, they will have a curse from Allah and they will be thrown into the valley of Wail, which is a valley of hellfire. Allah talks about the disobedience and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards till the end of, um, of the surah, Allah talks about the disobedient and towards the end Allah says uh, about the believers in the muttaqina fi jannati wa uyun. And the believers, of course, the God-fearing will be in a very um, aimed shades and streams on the day of judgment. And Allah will give them the fruits of Jannah. So this is the end of the 29th juz. The next is the 30th juz. <clears throat> From Surah Al-Naba. Surah Al-Naba is Surah number 78. And a Makki Surah revealed before the migration, Ayat are 40 and the Ruku are 2. According to the sequence of revelation, this Surah is Surah number 80. Amma yatasa'alun, again, towards the Day of Judgment. What are they asking about? The big news. What is this big news? They are in dispute about. Allah says soon they will know. And when that news will come, the earth will start having... Uh, the earthquake, the earth will start to have, uh, to start to shake. And Allah says, Alam mihada wal jibal awtata. In this world, we have made the earth a floor for you and uh, the mountains as a source of, of, of pegs. We have created into, into you into, we have created you into pairs. So the Qudrat of Allah and then taking you towards the Akhirah. The next surah is An-Nazi'at. <clears throat> An-Nazi'at are referring to those angels that come and they take out the soul from the body. And we have given that description multiple times in our sessions that how the, how the souls will be taken out, taken out from the bodies of human beings. Given that the surah number 79 and 81 according to the sequence of Revelation, 79 sequence of Quran. 46 are the verses and ruku are two. So an-nazi'at, nazi'at, naza'a is the time when you are about to die and the angels come. He says, that when the death will come, and start gripping you at that time. No ta'weez, no type of, of, of type of sorcery will come and assist you. Uh, uh, Farazdaq mentions in a very beautiful manner that I will be placed into the, uh, into the grave and, and I, will be, I will be in the, uh, the pentacles of death and the souls will come out. People will be standing around me with, May Allah have mercy on me on that day, the day that I'm going to depart on this day, because that's the, that's, the, that's the success that is for a human being is determined or failure is determined from the time when that soul departs from the body. Allah says that there are two categories of people in this surah. One category are those who have fixed their lives and they will be enjoined for in al jannata hi al ma'wa those who have fear of allah and they have protected their souls from obeying their desires 
the Jannah will become their abode. And unfortunately, those who have not, then Jahannam will become their abode. So Jannat and Jahannam and their people will are, are being discussed in Surah Al-Nazi'at. Surah Al-Abasa, the beginning portion of this surah has been dedicated to one of the Sahabi of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the name of Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum who was a blind Sahabi. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was sitting with the chiefs of Mecca and this blind Sahabi came in to ask question. Of course, he was blind, so he wasn't able to see that Nabi Alayhi Salam, he is addressing uh, the important people of Mecca. So when he asked the question, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not feel very comfortable of his approach. At that time, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given these ayat by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. According to the sequence of the Quran, 80, according to the sequence of Revelation, 24. Ayat are 42 and Ruku are, is one. Abasa wa tawalla. He, the Prophet Sallallahu frowned and turned his face. Ja'ahul a'ma because the blind man came to him. Oma yudirika la'allahu yazzakka. Oh, how could you tell that this person want to become purified, O Prophet of Allah? Yazzakka, he would like to become purified. Aw yazzakkaru fatanfa'ahu dhikra or has received an advice and he, the benefit as advice is going to and, and the advice is going to benefit him. Those who don't want to listen and they don't want to show their care towards the faith. You are anxious to pursue him. While there is no blame on you if, they, if he does not attain purity. Meaning those who disobey Allah. Worry about those who are coming closer. Don't worry about those who have gone away. These people are just taking up your time and they don't want to obey. So focus on those people who are sincere because they are the people of guidance and they are the people who will, who will be your helper and assistant. So in this surah, Allah talks about addressing Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then his qudra and what Allah has given this human being, how Allah has made him come into this world and the different bounties that Allah Azza wa Jal has given human being. Surah Al-Takweer and Infitar. Both of are talking about the day of judgment. Um, in Fitar, uh, Takweer is uh, Surah number seven, according to the sequence of Revelation, 81 sequence of Quran, talking about the day of judgment. In Fitar, which is also the next Surah, talking about the day of judgment, I tell. The first one talks about the sun, how the sun is going to burst. And the second one is talking about the clouds in Fitar. 82 according to the sequence of Revelation and um, 82 also according to the sequence of the Quran. Next surah is Al-Mutaffifin. Al-Mutaffifin are those people who mass wealth but they don't spend. Tatfif. They are those who do cheating in their transactions. Right, al mutaffifin who are those at tatfif means that you are not honest when it comes to dealings, buying and selling. So Allah is talking about the harms of those people in this surah that a believer is always honest and a believer is always dedicated. 83 according to the sequence of the Quran and 86 according to the sequence of Revelation. In Shiqaq, talking about the day of judgment and the two people human being who will have success and those who will not have success. 83 according to the sequence of the revelation and 84 according to the sequence of the Quran, ayat are 25 and the ruku is one. Al-Buruj, next surah. Surah Al-Buruj, Allah talks about um, the formation of the sky on the day of judgment. 85 according to the sequence of the Quran and 27 according to the sequence of Revelation, the ayat are 22. Allah says, I swear by the sky, the one having uh, stellar formations. And by the, by the promised day, which is the day of judgment. Allah also talked about the story of Ashab al-Ukhdud. It's the boy who uh, 
was saved from the tyrant ruler and because of him many people accepted Islam and hey uh, there was a baby that spoke in his cradle Imam Bukhari has mentioned that there are three child that had spoken in the cradle in the um, on the lap of their mother and one of them is attached with the story here Ashab al um, the next surah is a tariq tariq means the star that comes at night so Allah talks about uh, the qudrat of the star the night comer which comes in the sky uh, piercing brightness of the star there is no human being but there is a watcher over him so the stars and then the creation of Allah and the angels who are watching this human being at all time Surah Al-A'la speaks about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how great Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Ghashiyah the day of judgment talks about the day of judgment that how the day of judgment is going to come and uh, the information about the day of judgment and the categories of those people who will be happy and who will have bright faces and those who will have gloomy faces on the day of judgment. Al-Fajr talks about the morning time. Allah takes the qasam of that day of the Fajr. Well, Fajr, the early morning dawn, and some of them say it refers to the Fajr of the day of Arafah when all the hujjaj go towards Arafah. Walayal in Ashr and the ten nights and by the evening and the odd, the odd nights of the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Layali Ashr refers to the last 10 nights. Also, ulama say that it refers to walwatr um, and walwatr is anything that is even and odd can be considered into this. Also, the 10 days of the first 10 days of the first uh, of the Dhil Hijjah, they are also mentioned regarding the 10 uh, nights here the days of the of of uh, the first 10 days of the month of Zulhijjah, which are very sacred days. In this surah, Allah talks about his powers and qudra and what a human being will receive when he re when he depart from this world. Uh, the ultimate success, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. This surah is 89 according to the sequence of the Quran and Sequence of revelation is surah number 10, Makki surah. Al-Balad, taking the qasam of the city of Mecca. La uqsimu bihad al-Balad, wa anta hillum bihad al-Balad, wa walidi wa ma walad. Swear by the city, referring to the honorable city of Mecca. Surah Al-Balad is 90, according to the sequence of the Quran, and 35 sequence of revelation. Allah talks about his, uh, about this human being and how Allah has given him different things. And eventually, this human being will go towards the hereafter. Surah Al-Shams and Layl, the Qudrat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and how Allah Azza wa Jal has created two different creation of His, who, and Allah takes their Qasam. And the reason why Allah is taking the Qasam of all, Shams, Qamar, Nahar, Layl, Sama, Ard, Nafs, because Allah is giving the importance that these are important factors, through which a person can connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Shams is 60, uh, 26 according to Revelation and 91 according to the sequence of the Quran. Al-Layl, similar um, address is about the Qudrat of Allah. Surah Al-Layl also talks about those who spend in the cause of Allah and referring to Abu Bakr and those who don't spend in the cause of Allah and referring to As ibn Wa'il. Uh, 92 according to the sequence of Quran and Surah number 9 according to sequence of Revelation. Surah Al-Duha. This is Al-Duha and Inshirah are one after another. 93 and 94. Uh, Surah Al-Duha is uh, 11 according to the sequence of the Revelation and Surah Al-Inshirah which is the next Surah is 12 according to the sequence of Revelation. This is the praise of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I swear by the forenoon, wal-layli idha saja, and by the night when it becomes peaceful. Wad-duha, Imam Razi's tarjuma, tafsir al-kabir. Wad-duha, O Allah, Allah is taking the qasam and the swear of the bright face of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى and the black long hair of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Imam Razi Tafsir Al-Kabir مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has not left you and he has not dis uh, he is not displeased with you the akhirah is better for you than this world allah will give you so much so you may become pleased oh messenger of allah we have found you orphan and we gave you shelter we found you misguided and we guided you allah azza wa jalla says to the prophet sallallahu alaihi so both of these surahs are in the praise of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam Surah Tutin, sequence of the Quran 95, Revelation is 28. What teen was Zaytun Waturi Sinin? I swear by the fig and the olives, and by the true, the mountain of Sina, Wahad al Balad al Amin, and by Allah says, We take the swear by the peaceful city. What teen refers to Baytul Maqdis, Atin and Zaytun. Where Al Mamba Al Ambiya Bani Israel, where the Ambiya of Bani Israel came. Tur Sayna is where Musa alayhi salam revealed revelation. And Had al Balad al Amin is the Messenger of Allah. So what Tini was Zaytun, Allah says, We take the swear of all the Ambiya that were sent in Bani Israel. And we take the, uh, and especially referring to Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and his progeny Ishaq and Ismail and Yaqub moving forward. And then Waturi uh, Sinin, take the swear of Musa alayhi salam, Wahad al Balad al Amin, the Qasam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Razi Tafsir al Kabir. So, Surah Al Teen, Allah talks about the importance of fig and olive. These are very good, great fruits that Allah has created in this world. Um, ulama say that they are from the uh, fruits of Jannah and they have many benefits in, 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 in eating them. Allah talks about this human being that Allah has made him the best of creation, but he decided to become the worst of creation by disobeying Allah, except those who have Iman and Amal and Saleh. For them, they, are, they have never-ending reward. And then Allah says, isn't Allah the greater ruler of all the rulers? Now, Mufassirin say that when you are reading the Quran, there are takbirat that you are supposed to recite from starting Surah Al-Duha. Some of the Mufassirin has recommended to recite them, and some of them say you don't have to recite uh, from Surah Al Duha all the way. La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, walillahi alhamdu bismillahi rahman rahim alam nashrah laka sadra. And then La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, walillahi alhamdu bismillahi rahman rahim wa tini wa zaytun. La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, walillahi alhamdu bismillahi rahman rahim iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. So these are the uh the, the takbirat that you need to recite towards the end all the way till the end of the quran this happens in some of the qiraat some of the qurra has mentioned the uh, the riwayat of of qiraat the, some of them have made it mandatory to recite the takbirat but in the hafs qiraa it is not mandatory <clears throat> surah al-alaq number one revelation 96 according to the sequence of the Quran talks about the importance of the of human beings creation and the importance of this book that has been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the latter portion of the surah talks about um, the, the day of judgment tell me if he is on the right hand about the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the next surah is after Alaq is Surah Al-Qadr speaking about the very important night of Laylat Al-Qadr which happens in the last 10 nights, odd nights of the month of Ramadan. That night is better than 1,000 months. According to the sequence of the Quran, 97 and 25 sequence of revelation. al bayyina the great evidence. And that is the evidence of the Day of Judgment <clears throat> and the Quran. Hatta ta'tiyahum al bayyina this bayina is the Quran. Bayina is also the clear signs that Allah has sent. Bayina also means death and also the day of judgment when people will be asked questions in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are all evidences that are on earth and all of these evidences can be meant when it speaks about bayina. Makki surah revealed before the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 100 according to the sequence of revelation. 
and according to the sequence of Quran is surah number 98. Next is Zalzala. Surah Zalzala talks about the earthquake that will happen on the day of judgment when everything will come out and a human being will say that what is going on onto the earth and that day whoever has done good deed will see the reward and whoever has done bad deed will also see the reward. Surah Zilzala, Zilzal is 99 according to the sequence of the Quran and 93 according to Revelation. Wal-Adiyati Dabha, next surah. 100 according to the sequence of Quran and 14 according to the sequence of Revelation. Allah is talking about those strong horses that get up to go and serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Qudrat of Allah. Inna al-insana li rabbihi A human being is very ungrateful to Allah. Al-Qunud, <laughs> Mufassirin write, Al-Qunud is that person who remembers the bounty but forgets the giver of the bounty. And that is insan. He uses the bounty, mashallah, all the ni'mat of Allah he's utilizing, but forgets the one who has given him the bounty. So Allah says this is a human being. So we have to come out from being that individual and become iman, mu'mineen, and muttaqeen. Insan is our nature, but from our nature we should come out and become mu'mineen and muttaqeen in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Qari'ah, the great news, the striking event, which is? The Day of Judgment, 101, and according to the sequence of the revelation, this surah is number 30. Next set is takathur, those who mass wealth, but they don't spend until they go into the grave. 102, according to the sequence of the Quran, and 16, according to the sequence of revelation. Al-Asr, the time of Asr, or the time itself. Makiya, sequence of the Quran, 103, and revelation is 13. Talks about the reality of life, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would recite this surah at the end of gatherings. Why? Because this surah reminds us about our reality as human being that we have given responsibility. Al-Humaza, Al-Hammazun, Wal-Lammazun. There are those people who are the backbiters and the deriders and, the, and those who give accusations. Allah talks about their harms. 104 according to the sequence of the Quran and 32 according to the sequence of Revelation. Allah says these people will end up in the hellfire. Al-Fil, Surah Al-Fil refers to the event that happened on the earth and the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Abraha who was deciding to go and destroy the Kaaba, Allah sent Ababil, a small bird that came and destroyed the army of Abraha. Surah number 105 and according to the sequence of Revelation, Surah number 19. Quraysh, 106. According to the sequence of Revelation, it is 29. This is talking about the Quraysh, how Allah gave them so much access into this world that they were easily traveling from one area to another area in businesses. So Allah is telling him, Worship the Lord of this house, meaning Baytullah. Surah number Ma'un, those who deny. Al Ma'un is the denier who denies uh, the bounties of Allah and becomes lazy in salah and does not help those who are in need. Surah number 17 according to Revelation and 107 according to the sequence of the Quran. Next surah is Kawthar, referring to the Hawdi Kawthar uh, that will be given to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, we have granted you Kawthar. Kawthar is the water that the people of Jannah who have been decided to go into Jannah, they will be made drink from the from Hawdi Kawthar before they go into Jannah. And this will have, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the glasses of this Hawd, which will be hanging around this pond, are equivalent or even more than the stars in the sky. Ayah number uh, Surah number 15, according to the sequence of Revelation, and 108, according to the sequence of the Quran. Surah Kafirun, According to the sequence of the Quran 109 and 18, according to the sequence of Revelation, this surah was revealed. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is telling the people of, the, of Mecca that I am going to worship Allah and you can continue to worship whoever you want. But that will not change my decision to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One of the early surahs of, of, of the Quran, surah number 18, according to Revelation. Surah Nas 114. The last surah to be revealed, according to the majority of Mufassirin, as a surah, 114, surah al-Nasr, according to Revelation. 
and 110 according to the sequence of the Quran. This is the information of the demise of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Fath al Makkah and after everything has been uh, Allah Azza wa Jal can complete the mission of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when you come to an end فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Glorify the praise of your Lord Purify the praise of your Lord and seek forgiveness. Why? Because he seeks, he accepts forgiveness. Surah Al Lahab 111 and Surah number 6, according to the sequence of revelation. Referring to Abu Lahab, Abu Lahab was the uncle of the Prophet. He was very hostile and very created very difficulty of the Prophet. He had a very bad death. And Allah Azza wa Jal put him into a disease a pandemic disease, and then he was thrown out, out of the city of Mecca, died outside, and people were telling, even his sons were not willing to go and do his burial. Eventually, they hired few people, and they flunked, they picked him up with sticks and threw him into the ground. This was his end. Why? Because he was very, very harsh against the Prophet ﷺ. Him and his wife, they were both destroyed. When this surah was revealed, his two sons, who, was, who were engaged by the two daughters of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zainab bin Umm Kulthum. They both gave a divorce or they broke the relationship or the engagement by the, daughter, uh, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's daughters. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam later on got each of them married separately at different times with Uthman radiallahu anhu who became the Nurain, the possessor, the possessor of two lights because he had the honor of marrying two daughters of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after the second daughter, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Laukunt said, Laukuntu li ashran, lizawwajtuhum, lizawwajtuhum li Uthman. Even if Allah had given me 10 daughters and each of them have died, I would have one by one married them with Uthman radiallahu anhu. He was one of the best um, uh, son-in-law of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uthman bin Affan. Surah Al-Ikhlas is the nasab of Allah. The people of Mecca said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Unsub lana rabbak. Tell us who is your Lord. This surah was revealed. Al-Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Tell them, Allah, he is one. Ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the greatest amount of sincerity and greatest amount of the praise of Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Ikhlas. Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. There has been a difference of opinion on this revelation. Some say it's a Makki Surah and some say it's a Madani Surah. However, the Mufassirin are towards inclination. This is a Madani Surah revealed because of the, uh, the people who, has, who had done... Uh, magic upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there is a very big discussion amongst the Mufassirin regarding this. Uh, Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas are the surahs of protection. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the riwayat of Sahih Bukhari, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before he would go to bed or at night, he would recite these two surahs and he will blow on his hand and then he would rub it on his body. Aisha radiallahu anha mentions that when the Prophet ﷺ became very sick towards the last portion of his life, he was not able to recite. So I would recite the surahs, Al-Falaq and Nas, and blow it on the hands of the Prophet ﷺ. Then I would take his hands and rub it in his body. Because these were the Mubarak hand of Nabi ﷺ. I could have used my hands, but no, I used the hands of the Prophet ﷺ because they have more barakah and I will do this amal. This was the continuous amal of every night of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before going to bed, he would recite Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas, blow it on his hand and then rub it entire to the entire body of his. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us the understanding, the ability. These are just the briefly, we went through the surahs. Of course, each surah has a lot of meaning and depth uh, explanation. And inshallah, hopefully after the Ramadan and Eid, uh, we will start a detailed tafsir. Uh, if people have interest, inshallah, we can do that uh, uh, later on.
We ask Allah to accept this. This is only to the mere blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah made us reach to its end. This is no, uh, you know, when we started this, we were in a very confusion. How are we going to come to an end? But Allah's blessing and his rahmah and his mercy, it was a very, very, very small amount of effort from us. But we ask Allah to accept this effort because without the acceptance of Allah, nothing is granted. Inshallah, we will do the completion of dua. This is the khatma of our tafsir as well as the recitation of the Quran that happens every Friday. We have two khatams combined together. This is the blessed day of Jumu'ah, the last Jumu'ah of this holy month of Ramadan. Allah's blessing is descending. Inshallah, we will supplicate to Allah to make us part of those people who have been granted success, Inshallah. So if you would like to call other family members in your house to participate in the dua, I will give two minutes, inshallah, and then we can we can continue with the dua. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله كله على نيته وسر لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا لك الحمد بما أكرمتنا ولك الحمد بما سترتنا ولك الحمد بالأهل والمال والمعافات اللهم لك الحمد كالذي تقول وخير مما نقول اللهم لا نحسي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعذائم مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إذ لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لكرضا إلا قضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لك الحمد على ما يسرت لنا إتمام القرآن والتوفيق للصيام والقيام اللهم لك الحمد على نعمك العظيمة وآلائك الجسيمة حيث أنزلت علينا خير كتبك وأرسلت إلينا أفضل رسلك وشرعت لنا أعظم شرائع دينك وهديتنا لمعالم دينك الذي ليس به التباس وجعلتنا من خير أمة أخرجت للناس اللهم جعلنا من من أهل القرآن الذين هم أهلك وخاصتك اللهم انفعنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم جعل القرآن لنا في الدنيا قرينا وفي القبر مونسا وعلى السرات نورا وفي الجنة رفيقا ومن النار سترا وحجابا وإلى الخيرات كلها دليلا وإماما بفضلك وجودك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا أول الأولين ويا آخر الآخرين ويا ذا القوة المتين ويا راحم المساكين 
منزول بك كل حاجة اللهم إنا ضعفا فقو في رضاك ضعفنا وخذ إلى الخير بنواصينا واجعل الإسلام منتهى رضائنا اللهم اللهم إنا عبيدك بنو عبيدك بنو إمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك اللهم بكل بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب أمومنا وأمومنا وقائدنا إلى جناتك جنات النعيم اللهم ذكرنا منهما نسينا وعلمنا منهما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يرضيك عدنا اللهم اقسم لنا من خشتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاسيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهول به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل فأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النال مصيرنا واجعل الفردوس هي دارنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عدنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عدنا اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم أعتق رقابنا ورقاب آبائنا وأمهاتنا وأزواجنا وأولادنا وأساتذتنا من النار اللهم أجدنا من النار اللهم أجدنا من النار اللهم حاسبنا حسابا يسيرا اللهم حاسبنا حسابا يسيرا اللهم أعنا على سكرات الموت وغمرات الموت ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تقزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميدا إنك لا تخلف الميعاد ربنا إننا سمعنا منادي ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمدنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد O oh Allah, forgive our sins. O oh Allah, the sins that were committed in the darkness of the night, in the brightness of the day, we seek your forgiveness. O oh Allah, make this Ramadan as a source of blessing for us. As the Ramadan coming to an end, O oh Allah, make this Ramadan finish in our life the way of, of bring up a source of bringing rahmah and mercy. O oh Allah, make our name written in the group of those who have been given deliverance of, from the fire of hell. Who have been granted Jannah? Who have been granted? Al-Hisab, Rabb al-Samawat wal-Ard wa ma bainahum al-Rahman la yamlikun minhu khitab. Yom yqum al-Ruh wal-Malaik tusaf. لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه مآبا إنا أنذرناكم عذابا قريبا يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقول الكافر يا ليتني كنت ترابا 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنازعات غرقا والناشطات نشطا والسابحات سبحا فالسابقات سبقا فالمدبرات أمرا يوم ترجف الراجفة تتبعها الرادفة قلوب يومئذ واجفة أبصارها خاشعة يقولون أئنا لمردودون في الحافرة أئذا كنا عظاما نخرة قالوا تلك إذا كرة خاسرة فإنما هي زجرة واحدة فإذا هم بالساهرة هل أتاك حديث موسى إذ ناداه ربه بالواد المقدس طوى اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى فقل هل لك إلى أن تزكى وأهديك إلى ربك فتخشى فأراه الآن آية الكبرى فكذب وعصى ثم أدبر يسعى فحشر فنادى فقال أنا ربكم الأعلى فأخذه الله نكال الآخرة والأولى إن في ذلك لعبرة لمن يخشى أأنتم أشد خلقا أم السماء بناها رفع سمكها فسواها وأوطش ليلها وأخرج ضحاها والأرض بعد ذلك دحاها أخرج منها ماءها ومرعاها والجبال أرساها متاعا لكم ولأنعامكم فإذا جاءت الطامة الكبرى يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى وبرزت الجحيم لمن يرى فأما من طغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى يسألونك عن الساعة أيان مرساها فيما أنت من ذكرى إلى ربك منتهاها إنما أنت منذر من يخشاها كأنهم يوم يرونها لم يلبثوا إلا عشية أو ضحاها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عبس وتولى أن جاء وما يدريك لعله يزكى أو يذكر فتنفعه الذكرى أما من استونى فأنت له تصدى وما عليك ألا يزكى وأما من جاءك يسعى وهو يخشى فأنت عنه تلهى كلا تذكره فمن شاء ذكره في صحف مكرمة